Thunder Bay's Chief Medical Officer of Health, Dr. Janet DeMille, has provided an update late Sunday night from the Thunder Bay District Health Unit on COVID-19. This is James with Net News Ledger, and here is Dr. DeMille. I am Dr. Janet DeMille, Medical Officer of Health of the Thunder Bay District Health Unit, and I want to provide you an update on COVID-19 and uh, the impact in this area. A little, little over a week ago, I did my first official press conference uh, on COVID-19 in this area. At that time, I noted that these are not normal times. In the recent weeks, including last week, we have seen a very significant escalation in the response from all levels of government, municipalities, First Nations communities, and at the provincial and national level. The response among community partners here in our area has also escalated. These are not normal times. What we are facing is a serious situation and we all need to pay attention, we all need to be informed, and we all need to collectively take measures that will reduce the impact of the virus here in Thunder Bay, in the Thunder Bay District, and beyond. And I'm going to talk about some of that today. I will start off by noting that we currently have no confirmed cases of COVID-19 in the Thunder Bay District Health Unit area. With the Assessment Centre at the Thunder Bay Regional Health Science and Centre opening up last week, we have had a greater opportunity to get people in for testing. Thus far, the results have all been negative. Unfortunately, the ability to process and analyze the tests uh, is limited provincially and even nationally, so we are experiencing a considerable delay in getting the results back. It should be noted though that people who are getting tested are self-isolating at home. So even if they had COVID-19, they're likely not spreading the virus, uh, especially in the community. There is community spread happening in other areas of Ontario, notably in the greater Toronto area. This became more apparent last week. This is not surprising this was going to happen eventually, and it is now happening. While we are somewhat protected here in northwestern Ontario by our geographic isolation, this will only give us a delay in the virus being here and spreading. It won't stop it. Right now, we need to act like the virus is here and that it is spreading here. This may be in the early stages of community spread here. However, now is the time that we need to act to slow the spread of, vi of the virus in our communities. With this, there are really two, two big goals. The first is to identify those at high risk of having the virus and putting in measures so that they don't spread the virus to other people. The second is that we must slow the spread of the virus in our communities. This slowing of the spread is also what is referred to by flattening the curve, which you may have heard of. So with respect to slowing the spread, there are a significant number, there are, uh, there are a number of significant measures that are already being put in place to limit or slow the spread of the virus here. These measures all serve to reduce the number of physical interactions and the closeness of those interactions. That is what matters, reducing the ability of the virus to spread from one person to another. So what we've seen is the closing of schools and daycares, the closing of bars and restaurants, cancellation of many sports and sporting events. There's limitation in gatherings, uh, impacting churches, for example, closing of recreational facilities, among other things. In addition, we've also seen many organizations that have implemented measures to reduce people being able to congregate or gather together. And where there still may, may be people coming together, these measures 
help increase the distance between people. These measures are all going to help and likely have already helped us. I do want to provide more specific details of things that we can do that will help. I'm going to speak of two areas. The first is returning travelers and the second is to talk about what we as individuals and families can do. So people who are returning from travel from outside of Canada can bring the virus back here, back to this area. This means people returning from anywhere outside of Canada, including anywhere from the United States. If many people return to this area with the virus, this could lead to significant spread of the virus in our communities. As such, returning travelers must self-isolate for 14 days upon their return. Self-isolation means staying at home, not going out, and limiting your contact and proximity to other people. You can get more details for self-isolation on the Health Unit website. I realize that many of you may have had significant challenges returning back here. I welcome you home. I'm glad you're back home, but please stay home. If you develop symptoms while you are self-isolating, that might include a fever or a new or worsening cough, please call telehealth or please call us here at the Thunder Bay District Health Unit. We can help you. I would also like to encourage family, friends, neighbors, and community members to help returning travelers. You can support them and you can make it easier for them to self-isolate. If you know somebody who is returning, say from after the March break, please tell them to stay home and help them be successful in doing this. For example, you could offer to pick up their groceries or other supplies for them. I now want to just talk about what we can do as individuals and families. The first really is stay home as much as possible. Avoid non-essential travel in your community. Work from home if you're able. Plan ahead for what you might need. For example, plan your meals and your grocery shopping so that you don't have to do this very often. I am actually working on limiting my trips to the grocery store to once a week. Work together with your friends and your family or your neighbors in doing this. Always remember the basics, hand washing, covering your cough and your sneezes with your sleeve. Avoid touching your face, your eyes, your nose and your mouth. Clean and disinfect high touch surfaces, like in your home, the doorknobs, your electronics, sink handles and handrails and light switches, and the keyboards and the, key the computer mouse, for example. Set up and use alternate means to connect with people. And I would like, uh, particularly important is alternate means to connect with people who are at greater risk of complications should they get infected with this virus. This includes older people and individuals with underlying medical problems. Don't get together with them in person, but connect with them in other ways. At this time, I also encourage you to take care of your emotional and mental health. These are challenging times. This can be very stressful. Really consider what your needs may be and how you might address these. Social distancing is really about physical distancing. It's really about reducing those interactions we might have where we are close to other people. But there are other ways to remain connected. Use electronic means to connect. Call a friend, use Skype or FaceTime, or use other measures online or use other online means of gathering instead of getting together physically. 
part participate in or create even online networks as means to connect. Unless you are self-isolating, you can also go outside. You can go for a walk in the sun. You can sit on your back deck or you could shovel your driveway if it snows. You can go outside to get some exercise. You could talk to your neighbors. Just maintain at least a two meter distance between people. There may be other opportunities you can explore. You may have time to do things that you don't normally have times to do. You might want to do some reorganization or some housekeeping in your home. You might want to learn to cook something new or read that book that you've been wanting to read for a while. You could catch up on your favorite TV show or movie. I would also encourage you to take a, a break from the news and social media at times. Sometimes that could be quite concerning. So I want to uh, end my update uh, today with uh, just a few points. I want to tell you that we at the Thunder Bay District Health Unit have been working with many partners to mitigate the impact of this virus in Thunder Bay and beyond. And that includes healthcare partners like hospitals, long-term care home, municipal partners, and others, partners in various sectors to, again, mitigate, work together collaboratively to mitigate the impact here. I want to note to you that the Thunder Bay District Health Unit website is constantly being updated to provide you as the public with current information, uh, including on stuff that I have talked about here today. As well, we have information for different sectors and partners, including businesses and workplaces. We also have information for families staying at home with children, among other things. And I want to end by reminding you and reinforcing this, that we are all in this together. Collectively, we as individuals, families, organizations and communities can do what it takes to limit the spread of impact of the virus here. Please join me and others in doing this. Thank you very much and have a good day. If you found this video helpful, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, share this video and keep up to date on what's going on.